Okay, so um, thank you very much, Abraham. Uh, I understand that the topic of this uh, webinar is about artificial intelligence on water resources. So maybe uh, my suggestion is to is to, to to add one previous word and 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 call it ICT and artificial intelligence on on water resources because the presentation that I will be showing is is not about artificial intelligence but it's about the use of information and communication technologies to make use of several tools in order to provide assistance to the management of uh, water resources in general. So uh, from the top, then um, uh, I am Daniel Vasquez. I, as I said before, I am working in Itaipu, that is a major hydropower plant inside of Itaipu. We have a research center called International Center on Hydroinformatics. And at the moment, I am coordinating this center. So today in this webinar, webinar, I will show you one of our previous projects that is about an information system for flow forecast. This project started maybe two years ago and it's already finished in its first phase. So during this first phase, we aim to make use of available resources so by this I mean that we wanted to make use of available models that were over uh, many institutions and universities, available data, and also, and also available technical resources in order to build a tool that can provide support to the, to the decision-making process in issues related to floods in, in general uh, to, for our country. So at that time, we have identified the following problems. So this happens across many countries. The availability of hydrological data and its accessibility are important limitations at the national level. Also, the little information that we can find is very dispersed among uh, many institutions. And there is no, at least in our country, there is no uh, tool that can provide efficient access to this data and information. And also, of course, the main problems are the floods. So we, we wanted to provide a tool that can help to the process of uh, reducing uh, the impacts of floods in, in, in our country. So to try to tackle these problems, we came up with this objective that was to develop an information system for flow forecasting for the entire country with a view for its future implementation in the corresponding institutions. Then the specific objectives were first to centralize and facilitate access to hydrological data and information for its various uses. And second one, to cooperate with the universities for the construction and provision of modeling tools for the main rivers of the country. And third, to make available a web platform that will offer the services of a flood early warning system. So during the planning process of this project, we came up with this, operate, with this uh, operating diagram. So as you can see, in the entire country, uh, in, in the entire process, we have four main components. The first one is related to data in general. So there is data in many institutions. Also, this data, they come in different formats. They come in different time steps. They come in different sizes. In, the, in different types of, of, of data, such as geospatial, hydrological, and meteorological. So uh, there is a big amount of, of data that we are collecting from all these uh, sources. In the second component, so it's more related to the process in general. Uh, for this, we use a programming language that is Python in order to make the data extractions from all these sources to, to to develop the scripts to convert from the different format, formats to convenient ones. 
also to manipulate uh, geospatial data and to make uh, many types of calculations. We also used Python in order to take control of different models that were provided for this project. And these were a semi-distributed hydrological model and also a hydrodynamic model that uh, simulates the flow for our uh, main river in, in the country. In this same component, we made use of free GIS software in order to inspect all the information that is being uh, uh, collected. So, as you can see in these two components, in the first one, a big volume of data is being captured, and in the second component, a big volume of information is being generated by the models. So, we, we needed to to, to, to get uh, infrastructure in order to allocate all this uh, data information. So we built, uh, the, we had a dedicated uh, server in order to storage all the information. We also had a dedicated server in order to run the models in an operation, uh, operational fashion, and also a dedicated server in order to handle the, um, the map services as well as the APIs that is going to be, uh, that, that was shown in our web platform. So in the last component is the part where we show the front end of the product. So we built a web page where we uh, show all the components that you see here. You are able to see the data, you are able to see the process of the models, and you are able to download all this information in this uh, platform. So very quickly, we I listed here some of the functionalities that the application provides. So first, there is an interface that allows to centralize the hydrological data of the country that is coming from all these institutions that I showed you before. There is another interface in order to show in real time a remote sensing precipitation from the GPM project. Uh, also another interface to see the forecast coming from the European Center for medium uh, range weather forecast. The variables that we are capturing are precipitation, soil, moisture, temperature, and and, and wind. I guess. And last, uh, we connected to the OpenStreetMap project in all in order to access to cartographic data and or in order to feed our uh, base maps. So all this information is being managed, but by a. Uh, uh, by a spatial data infrastructure called a GeoNode. And this uh, web-based software is in charge of managing all this uh, cartographic and geospatial information. And it also provides the services to access to the data and information that is being generated. Then a lot of, as I told you before, we used Python to make the scripts in order to take control of the models, the hydrological model and the hydrodynamic one. And also we made the scripts in order to couple them together and to run them in a daily basis, um, uh, in a daily basis, right? Also, uh, a lot of scripting, scripting was needed in order to perform Monte Carlo simulation in order to provide probabilistic forecast of uh, flow and water levels. Then um, another gadget that we try to include is these on-the-fly statistics. Uh, this is taking the real-time precipitation and is calculating these statistics by uh, districts, cities and, and basins of the entire country. So each time that we receive information, this is being calculated automatically and you can see it through the interface. And the last one, okay, we try to encapsulate all this information in a very simple manner in order to be able, be able to take decisions with it. So control panels were uh, developed and these control panels, they are, they, they are able to trigger notifications uh, when needed. 
So this is very quickly how our web platform looks like. This is one of the interfaces. So we focus on the usability and we try to make the interface very friendly. So in here, for instance, you can access to one specific station. You can uh, see the records of water level, precipitation, and other relevant information. Also, the interface that I told you before, this is the one showing real-time precipitation from the GBM project. Uh, this is being updated each uh, 30 minutes uh, with a delay of six hours. Uh, this is the interface where we capture the forecast from the European model. And then in the second and third component, what we do is so we make use of this information and we do it with available models. So here we don't have a, an, an artificial intelligence and nature model, but we have a, a, a conceptual types of models. So on one hand, we have a semi-distributed hydrological model. And on the other one, we have a hydrodynamic one that covers the entire river. So we didn't uh, build these models. What we did is we contact with our partners from the Catholic University of Asuncion, and we introduced these models to our web platform uh, infrastructure. Uh, we developed the scripts in order to couple them, as I, as I told you before, and, and then to run them in a daily basis. So in this interface, you are allowed to ask for, for a, lot, a lot of um, types of results. You can scroll with your uh, mouse and go to, to each basin, each node, each reach, and each cross section and ask for the results that the model provides. As you can see, the interface is very similar with the native uh, software that were used uh, to model these processes that were HEC-HMS and hec -West. So when you access to any of these points, you will get the, the results of the model that um, you can see in this chart in the green line, you can see the historic uh, data a historic simulation, and then in the blue line, you see the forecast forms. So for flood, for, for precipitation loss, uh, base flow, infiltration, and, and all the parameters that the, mo the hydrological model provides. The same thing for the hydrodynamic model. So you are able to navigate across the entire river and ask for the information in each station, and you will get the the water level and discharges. So there are other ways to show these same information and results, and we try to do it with uh, flood maps. So uh, the results from the hydrodynamic model are plotted uh, in, the, in the app, and then we contrast this information with available cartographic uh, data coming from census or from the OpenStreetMap project. So in here, what we can do is to generate these on-the-fly calculations where you are able to see how many uh, buildings, houses, schools, parks are being affected by each time step of the uh, model simulation. Also, we explored a little bit with Monte Carlo simulation, and we were able to generate a probabilistic forecast in flowcharts and also in maps. And this is the control panel that I told you before. So until now, we have seen uh, the technical information, but we also need to provide uh, this kind of inform information in a simpler way. So for this, we, we have these control panels where you can see with these red dots in the places that you are expecting to have problems. And in the control panel, you have just general descriptions and, and, and the, the sites where you are going to have these uh, flops. So when this happened, you can, there is a, a, you can trigger notifications via SMS or email to, to, to a relevant uh, uh, local authority. This is the same uh, thing 
just uh, showing by an animation. As you can see, we focus a lot in the usability, so if you are able to 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 go through all the information that is being generated to consult, even in in, in the map. So with your mouse, you you go anywhere in the country, you click it, and you will have the the results uh, that are being generated in that particular case. I think I'm running out of time, so very quickly we try to make assessments in the data quantity and quality. Uh, this with automatic scripts as well. And all the information that we generated are being managed by this uh, geospatial data infrastructure that I told you before. The name is, as you know, this is web-based, so it's a very clean way to, to, to access to all the shapefiles, rasters, and even the vector values that are being generated and with all the metadata and all the standards that, that are enforced by this uh, tool. So the purpose was to, to make the information available for the public as well and to facilitate uh, the, uh, the acquisition of this information. For this, we use uh, the WMS service that allows to connect from, uh, from any GIS software to our database. So uh, you will be able to access uh, very quickly to, to, to this, this information that I showed you before. So I guess uh, this is my last slide. Some ideas and next steps. So of course we we couldn't cover everything that we wanted um, during this project. So in this in a second phase we can try to work with uh, data standards such as Water ML in order to facilitate the intercommunication among uh, databases from many institutions. Also during the project we we to find out that. There, there is these BIRT uh, technologies, the meaning is uh, business intelligence and reporting tools. So this really facilitates the management of data. You can generate uh, and you can customize your plots and tables and, and charts in a very easy way. You have uh, free software such as Metabase and Tableau, I guess, is, is not free. And also very important, the next step is to, to work in the cooperation agreement with universities and institutions in the water sector for the operational implementation of this tool. So uh, that's it. I wish that this project is, is, uh, is of your interest. And if you have any question, I am here to answer them. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Um... Uh, we do have we have a lot of questions. Uh, there are some questions that are directed specifically at you. There are some questions that are more general questions that I would like to put to both you and uh, um, and also Mustafa. So um, now some questions directed specifically at you. Uh, the first one from Sura Fell is: um, In what resolution are the ECM WF precipitation and temperature forecast data sets? Um, Second question is, how long is the forecast length? Um, five, seven, 10, or 14 days? And the third question is, if they're freely available, how to access them as raw data to use in flood forecasting? Would you like to respond to that? Yes, sure. For the European Center um, forecast, the spatial resolution, I believe, is 10 kilometers. And we are receiving the data that is freely available, so it's with a horizon of seven days. And yes, they are freely available until some extent. And if you pay, you get um, uh, real-time data. We're actually getting data with, with some delay. And if you pay, you can also get ensembles and other kind of products. Okay. Uh, the next question directed specifically uh, specifically at you is from La Santa who asks, what is the software you use for geospatial data inspection? Okay, this is an interesting question because in the center we develop these tools and we try to implement them in the institutions. So we focus a lot on free software. So for this particular case, we use a QGIS and uh, 
also in Python you have uh, the ability to, 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 to manipulate this kind of information, but uh, in general terms we use just uh, QGIS. Okay. Uh, the next and last question before we uh, move on to the next presentation is from R. Gopa Kumar, who asks, uh, is the role of different associated institutions to provide data or they are also, or are they also involved in uh, running the models and providing results to the interface providing the information? So in our particular case, uh, our partners were the, the academia, so the the one university, also the National um, Hydrological and Water Service, and us. So the universities, they, they, they already had this model, so they provided the model, and the National Service provided the data, and other types of data were, are freely available in, in, in the internet. And we did, we developed the, 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 the platform and all the processes that you saw in the diagram that I showed you before. Okay, sorry, there's one more question which is uh, specifically directed at you, if you could quickly respond to this. Uh, sorry about that, Mustafa. Uh, Tatiana asks, uh, how have been the inter-institutional cooperation around this project? How did you get uh, homogenization to all inputs and variables? You mentioned something about conveniences. Can you expand a bit more about this? Okay, um, so the interinstitutional cooperations around these projects uh, were uh, actually at this first phase, it was a little bit informal. Uh, this was because it's very hard to to propose a project to some authorities if you don't have like a prototype, you know. So it's very hard to convince them if you don't have this. So we 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 got together with, with some technicians from these institutions and we built this uh, prototype in an in informal way so as to have this product in a short time of period. And with that, we are trying to uh, to trigger a second phase uh, where we are getting uh, funds in order to to make all the process uh, much more robust and to include even more information and include uh, more institutions. Uh, but uh, that's the way that we we, we dealt with this uh, project. And I don't remember talking about uh, uh, conveniences. I don't know what they mean by by that. 